Hello everyone. Uh, myself is Geeta Priya, Assistant Professor of CSC Department from RMD Engineering College. In this lecture, we will be seeing about uh, raster data compression. So data compression. Uh, data compression is nothing but reducing the actual volume of the data. In your geospatial data, you will be collecting a lot of uh, spatial data. So for the spatial data, it will be having a lot of uh, attributes to it. So gathering all those attributes and storing it in a database or uh, some storage area. So the volume of data will be larger and accompanying it or uh, organizing the large volume of data is a uh, little tedious. To overcome this, uh, we'll be going for the method called data compression, where the volume of the data will be reduced. So there are two types of uh, compressions there. One is uh, lossless. In lossless, the the, the loss of data will not uh, will not be there. And also, the quality of data will not be degrading. So, after doing your compression, you can also retain the actual data or original data from it. So, after compression, the data will be called as an encoded data. So, in lossless compression, after encoding your data, the actual data can can be retained. But in case of your lossy data, the loss of information will be there, and retaining the Original data after encoding is not possible. So uh, lossy will be used particularly in background images, all those things, but cannot be used for analysis purpose, all those things. So for uh, analyzing purpose and all other application, we will be going for lossless compression. Uh, there are four types of uh, four techniques available for doing your data compression. The first one is uh, run length encoding. Here you're going to compress the data by giving two information. The first one will be how many times a data is repeated and the name of the data. So in the first example, you can see that the uncompressed data uh, in uncompressed data, the first five data is uh, a, there is a five times a is present here. So after compressing your data, instead of uh, giving it as five, five times a, you will be writing it as five a. So in your uh, uncompressed data, uh, you need five units for doing the uh, for storing the data. That is five a. But after compressing, instead of five units, you can have only uh, two units for storing your data. That is five times a. That will be represented as five a. So similarly for all other data, you will be compressing your data in the same manner. So in your compression, you will be having two types of compression. One is uh, positive compression and negative compression. In positive compression, uh, the uncompressed, uh, the original data will be larger than the compressed data. That is, your original uh, encoded data will be smaller than the original data. But in case of your negative compression, your encoded data itself will be larger than the actual data. So we will be going for the positive compression only. So how actually run uh, run length encoding will be used in uh, raster data. So in your raster data, your uh, spatial data is going to be represented by using grid format or pixel format. So this is how your grid format will be. So by representing the integer, by distinguishing your spatial data, you will be using an integer format. So all the five will be representing the, uh, all the five will be representing the same type of spatial data. And 11, that is the green color, will be representing the same kind of data. And one will be representing the same kind of spatial data. So you are going to compress the whole grid format into a compressed format. So here you can see how your data has been compressed here. So in the first row, we are having the spatial data named 5. And 15 times 5 has been present in the first row. So after compression, instead of using the grid format or instead of using 15 units, you will be having only two units. The first one represents how many times the data has been repeated. And the second one represents the actual name of the data. So similarly, for all the rows, you are going to compress the data in the same manner. In the second row, you can take that. 5 has been present for 7 times. So we have written it as 7, 5. And after that, 11 has been present for four times. We are represented as 411. And afterwards, 5 has been present for four times. So we are represented that as 4, 5. So similarly, for all the rows, you are going to repeat the same format and you are going to compress the data. And this is how your run length encoding works. 
so second type of data or second technique is your uh, quad tree coding in quad tree coding similar to run and encoding the data spatial data is represented using a integer format the whole grid or whole block is going to be divided into quadrants in your quad tree so after encoding the data will be represented in a tree structure so after dividing your uh, whole grid into quadrants so in each quadrants means you are going to have four blocks inside one quadrant so one quadrant will be having four squares so here you are going to divide it and you are going to have four quadrants so in first quadrant so all the four squares are having same or uh, same type of data that is represented as one so in my compressed format i will be having one single node and i will be representing that as one that is the name of your spatial data in the second quadrant you are having uh, the data as three all the four squares are having same all the squares are having a uh, same type of data that is uh, three so i am having one single uh, node and only representing it as three but coming to the third quadrant all the four data are different here there is all the squares are having different spatial data that is 7 10 31 and 11 so i will be having one single node after that that one single node will be divided into four different nodes and i'll be naming the actual name of the spatial data and coming to the fourth quadrant you will be you are having all the four squares are the same value that is 8 so you will be having one single node and will be writing the actual name of the data and this is how quad tree coding works and your next technique is your block coding in block coding uh, it's uh, not similar to the previous two techniques that we are represented the spatial data by using the integer value but in your block coding you will be having a spatial data in a format of shaded region so the all the red color shaded region represents the presence of some spatial data in the grid so in your block encoding the first step will be you are going to divide the shaded region into number of blocks so block in sense the shaded region having same number of rows and same number of column will be represented as one single block and you are going to arrange e all the blocks in a hierarchical manner hierarchical manner in sense you are going to come from the larger hierarchical or larger block size to the smaller one so in our example the largest uh, blocks will be 3 cross 3 Three cross three inches, three rows and three columns. So you can see in this example, you can see the first block. There is the thing I am highlighting now. So this is the first block with three rows and three columns. And when you are going to write in a block, uh, what is it? A file structure or something. You can either do in the same manner or you can go for a table structure. The first parameter in my uh, compressed disk, I am going to know what is the block size. So three cross three block na three into three uh, block size is going to be nine, and count in sense how many times this three cross three block has been repeated in your grid. So in our example, three cross three is repeated for uh, it's not repeated. It is present only for one time. So my count will be one. And coordinates is you are going to consider the first square of the block to find the starting point or where the block begins. So for the coordinates, you are going to give the coordinate of first square of the block. So in our in my example, the three cross three block starts with the coordinate of five comma two. So after completing your three cross three matrix or block, you will be going for the second lowest hierarchy. That is after three cross three, you will be going for two cross uh, two cross two grid. So in my uh, example, there are two uh, two blocks with two cross two grid has been present. So two cross two inches, two rows and two columns. So this is one two cross two block, and this is the another one. So same as there, two cross two inches. The sub block size is going to be four, and count inches. How many times two cross two block has been present in my uh, uh, spatial or uh, in the grid format? So in my example, there are two times two comma two or two cross two block has been present. So the count will be two. And coordinate same. The starting point or starting square of the block has to be considered for coordinate the first block coordinates will be 4 comma 5 that is uh, this block the second block coordinate will be 6 comma 5 the coming to the next lowest hierarchy after 2 cro cross 2 
it is your one cross one block that is only one row and one column so after two cross two whichever blocks are left behind you are going to consider it as one cross one and the block size of one cross and one is one cross uh, one into one this your one is your block size and count how many times the block has been repeated so in this example four blocks are left as one cross one so your count will be four and coordinates for each the each of the block you are going to give the coordinate to find where the block is present so this is how block coding will be i'm going to the next one uh, next technique called chain coding this is similar quite similar to your block coding block encoding in block encoding also we will be representing the presence of spatial data by shading that particular region so that's how chain coding we are going to show how uh, spatial data is present but instead of dividing them into block in chain coding you will be having one starting point and you are going to traverse through the outer boundary of the whole spatial data and you are going to reach the starting point again so in this case the starting and ending point is going to be the same you are going to travel through the outer boundary of the spatial data or the whole single block so in this example my starting point is going to be 5 comma 2 by using the direction i am going to travel the outer boundary so by using north south east west i am going to travel that is the direction so here e3 represents so this is my starting point i am going to travel three times towards east so that is known as e3 here this is the file structure how we are going to store so after uh, traveling three times towards east you will be there in this point that is 7 comma 2 from there you are going to travel towards south by four times only at the beginning or the starting point you are going to consider the actual standing location and how many times you are moving so that is e3 after that you don't want to consider the actual standing location you can go with only how many times you are going to move the blocks so you will be here now i'm going to travel towards the south by 1 2 3 and 4 times so that is your s4 so after so after moving to the south you will you are going to move towards west by one time so that is your w1 so now you will be here currently so after moving towards the west you are going to go for the north by one time so that is your n1 and b w1 will be from north you are going to travel to the west by one west by one okay so after one yeah n1 you will be here uh, currently now after n1 you are going to move towards the west by one after west you are going to move towards north by 1 2 and 3 so this is your n3 after moving towards north east by one and finally you are going to reach the starting point the starting and ending point must be same so after e1 you will be here so finally you are going to move towards north by one and you will be reaching your starting point so this is how chain coding works you're going to have one single point as a starting point after that by using the direction you're going to travel through the outer boundary of the whole spatial data and again you're going to reach the same starting point and this is how your file structure will be represented but while encoding your data the directions will also be considered or will be represented using a integer format and not by using an alphabet so uh, integer in sense i'll be assigning uh, integer for all the directions all the four directions by e means i'll be like i can represent it as 101 so e3 will be written as 101.3 so here 101 represent east direction so in this case we have taken the direction itself but when you are going for encoding the data you will be representing directions also in the integer format so uh, in this lecture we cover covered about what is data compression what are the types that is the lossless and lossy compression after that we have covered about uh, what are the techniques are there for doing the data compression so four methods we have seen now there is run length encoding quartree compression block encoding and chain coding thank you